December 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Zechariah chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. Next I saw Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, with Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, May the Lord rebuke you, Satan. May the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Isn't this man like a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood there before the angel. The angel spoke up to those standing all around, Remove his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, I have freely forgiven your iniquity and will dress you in fine clothing. Then I spoke up, Let a clean turban be put on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood nearby. Then the angel of the Lord exhorted Joshua solemnly, The Lord who rules over all says, If you live and work according to my requirements, you will be able to preside over my temple and attend to my courtyards, and I will allow you to come and go among these others who are standing by you. Listen now, Joshua, the high priest, both you and your colleagues who are sitting before you, All of you are a symbol that I am about to introduce my servant, the branch. As for the stone I have set before Joshua, on the one stone there are seven eyes. I am about to engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord who rules over all, to the effect that I will remove the iniquity of this land in a single day. In that day, says the Lord who rules over all, Everyone will invite his friend to fellowship under his vine and under his fig tree. The angelic messenger who had been speaking with me then returned and woke me, as a person is wakened from sleep. He asked me, What do you see? I replied, I see a menorah of pure gold with a receptacle at the top and seven lamps, with fourteen pipes going to the lamps. There are also two olive trees beside it one on the right of the receptacle and the other on the left. Then I asked the messenger who spoke with me, What are these, sir? He replied, Don't you know what these are? So I responded, No, sir. Therefore he told me, These signify the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by strength and not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord who rules over all. What are you, you great mountain? Because of Zerubbabel, you will become a level plain, and he will bring forth the temple capstone with shoutings of grace, grace, because of this. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me as follows. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this temple, and his hands will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord, who rules over all, has sent me to you. For who dares make light of small beginnings? These seven eyes will joyfully look on the tin tablet in Zerubbabel's hand. These are the eyes of the Lord, which constantly range across the whole earth. Next I asked the messenger, What are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the menorah? Before he could reply, I asked again, What are these two extensions of the olive trees, which are emptying out the golden oil through the two golden pipes? He replied, Don't you know what these are? And I said, No, sir. So he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. God, two amazing chapters in Zechariah. Zechariah is just like saturated with amazingness. The first vision talking about Joshua and iniquity and you coming and making him clean. So powerful, completely points to your son, the Messiah coming, who will take on the sins of the entire world. Just saying that out loud is overwhelming unto itself. And with Satan standing there, making us try and think that what our sins are is who we truly are. He was trying to put all of that on Joshua, saying he couldn't be anything but the the excrement clothing that he was wearing and you came in and said nope I make him white as snow I replace everything that is sin with purity God, that's just 
stunning that you would do that for us, that you would take that away and forgive our sins. And you did that through the sacrifice of your son. And then we see your love and your power and your compassion show up in, in the next vision, the vision of the gold menorahs. And I love that part that says, what are you, you great mountain? Because of Zerubbabel, you will become a level plain and he will bring forth the temple capstone with shoutings of grace, grace because of this. God, our lives are filled with those mountains, those great big huge highs and those great big huge lows. And we call the highs the good parts of our lives and we call the lows the bad parts. And to you, it's not. To you, it is a level plain. It is exactly how our life should be and that we should seek you to control those highs and those lows. I have a friend whose heart is breaking, completely shattered over a situation. She goes through extreme lows because of things that are going on in her life. And I know that you made us human and we feel pain and sorrow, anguish, frustration. We go through all of those emotions and none of that is bad unto itself. But you say we don't have to do it alone. It doesn't have to be so extreme that you will help us shoulder that burden so it becomes more like a level plane rather than this huge up and downs that we that we seem to deal with in our lives. Let me become your capstone in your life. Let me become your foundation in your life. God, how powerful is that? That if we build our life on the foundation of you, on the foundation of your word, on the foundation of your promises to us, then absolutely nothing is impossible. As the Bible says, nothing is impossible with you, God. I love that imagery of the, what are these, you great mountains? No, they're just a plain, but they are a plain only if we turn these things over to you, only if we rely on you, God, only if we humble ourselves before you. God, I'm not one to talk about this because I'm a control freak. I know you know this. And so learning that process with you of, of giving up control and allowing you to guide my life, guide my heart, guide my words, guide my actions. You know that I fought you for a very long time on that. It was a very strange thing to me. And I still catch myself once in a while going back into those old habits. But I have to tell you without question that my life honestly is so much easier doesn't mean that I still don't have the same complications, but it's so much easier to deal with now that I have you in charge, that you're in control of all of that. My life is filled not only with grace, as they were talking about in these verses, tremendous amount of grace, but this beautiful peace that you have given me, that I can tackle anything because it is simply a level plane. When I go up against my hardest opponents, when I'm under extreme persecution, with you it simply becomes a level plane and it doesn't seem so overwhelming that we can't do it just like they looked at the temple and like we can't build the temple political pressure peer pressure physical pressure we just can't do it but with you all things are possible i thank you for all of this god and i pray all this in your son's name amen